Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be looking at how you can get the best results when printing with clear or translucent resins. This is something that I'm not entirely familiar with, but I'm really excited to test this out and I'm sure there's 101 different ways that we could go about this. But today we'll be really digging in and looking at a few of these and seeing what the results look like. And by the end, hopefully this will give you a better idea of how you can clean up and get the best results with your clear resin prints. If you have a process that you think works best, let me down in the comments because I am interested in continuing to experiment on this and see what are the best options possible depending on what you're printing. For our experiment today, I've printed off a variety of things for us to test and compare. From 32 millimeter scale miniatures with lots of details to replica props that are nice and flat and larger busts and sculptures, again, with lots of detail that will hopefully be fun for us to play around with. I'm also gonna be cleaning off everything in a fresh new tank of 70% isopropyl alcohol or IPA and the Elgu wash and cure station. I went with a fresh tank of IPA just so I could try and get the best results from these clear resin prints. I'm also using 70% IPA just because that was the easiest thing for me to get a hold of that I could find at one of my local shops. And one thing that I haven't been able to test is if you're gonna get better results with 70% versus 80 versus 90% isopropyl alcohol. I first loaded up some clear minis and a few test pieces to be cleaned and we'll be cleaning off all of my prints for about three minutes in the wash and cure station. I should also mention that I'm not only testing clear resins, but also other multicolor translucent resins to see again, which of these test results yields the best results for us, depending on what we're printing. Once the parts are finished being cleaned, I let them sit out and air dry for about 10 to 20 minutes without any direct UV light. One thing to note is right after you dip these in any sort of water or isopropyl alcohol, they're immediately gonna look crystal clear, which is again, the result that we're going for in the end. But as we'll see, that doesn't really last very long. One thing that you'll also wanna make sure that you're doing is cleaning off your clear prints first before moving on to any of your prints that have any color or pigment in the resin. You don't want any of that to tint your clear prints. So for our experiment, we have a few different scenarios that we're gonna be testing out. The first of those is that we're gonna clean off our print with IPA, then cure under UV light, then apply a light clear coat to the print. We're also gonna be looking at cleaning your prints in IPA and directly curing, but no clear coat. We're also gonna be looking at cleaning off your prints in IPA, then directly going to clear coating and then curing your prints. And the last thing that we're gonna do is nothing just as a control so that we can see what it looked like before we did any of these tests. We'll also look at trying to tint your clear resin with a little bit of blue ink, as well as curing directly in water. Our first test needed us to clean with IPA and then cure under UV light before we can move on to clear coat. I'm using two minutes as the default here for all of my curing within the UV chamber for the prints. I'm using Rust-Oleum Clear for all my tests today as well. You'll wanna make sure that you're working with glossy finish, not a matte finish when it comes to your spray paints. I then apply a few light coats to my prints and let them air dry. One other thing to note is that it was about 60 to 70 degrees out and really sunny, which was great for spray painting. However, that meant that my prints were gonna be also getting some additional UV light curing during this entire process. I also went ahead and clear coated the non-cured prints as well during this process. The one thing I immediately noticed is that the pre-cured prints were looking much more yellow or brown compared to the non-cured prints that I had just coated. I also have this Oni mask that I've previously printed and cured that I've had sitting around for probably a year plus now, and I figured I might as well see what I can do to bring some life back into this old print. So I applied some clear coat to it and I immediately noticed how much sexier this print looked. I also saw that any of the previous scars or sanding marks just kind of disappeared once I applied the clear coat to it. Since I was seeing some of my clear prints turning yellow or brown, I decided I should test out the idea that I've seen online where people mention adding a little bit of blue ink to their clear resin so that it's counteracting the yellowing that can occur when you're curing your prints. Well, my first attempt, there was just way too much blue ink that I added to the clear resin and it just looks like a blue translucent print at this point. So I went back and before I printed, I only added two drops of the ink to the resin mixture and I did that directly in the vat and mixed it up and printed and I think this time it came out much better. One other method that I wanted to try and test out was what happens if you cure your prints directly in water. I've seen people talk about that and how that works well for them. So I got a plastic container and filled it with water and put it inside the wash and cure station with some of my prints and let it cure for a few minutes. I also ended up getting my plastic container stuck inside the lid of the wash and cure station. Yeah, forcing the container inside there was not the best idea. 
I do think that this helped keep the prints from yellowing or turning brown. However, they do seem a lot more cloudy than the previous prints. I also wanted to try out another idea, which is wet sanding your prints before applying clear coat to them. So this obviously will not work well for things like miniatures or prints that have a whole lot of small details to them. But for these batarangs that I've printed, it should work out really nicely. Also, anytime that you're sanding with resin, you wanna make sure that you're wearing some sort of respirator. You definitely don't wanna be breathing in the resin powders while you're sanding. So before I started wet sanding, I just used some 220 grit sandpaper directly on the prints and then moved on to wet sanding with 600 grit. I made sure to thoroughly sand both sides before moving on and wet sanding with 1000 grit. You could also opt to go even further than that if you wanted to with something like 2000 grit sandpaper. I don't have any of that on hand and I just wanted to try and keep this as simple as possible for this initial set of experiments. I also had this translucent Mando visor laying around that I'd previously printed on the Elgu Saturn and I figured why not go to town on this and do some wet sanding on it before letting it air dry. It's amazing how smooth your prints are going to feel after a few passes with sanding and wet sanding. It's crazy. I then went off and hit these prints with some glossy clear coat as well. All right, let's take a look at the results from our little experiment. All right, so let's take a look at some of the clean and cured prints. This is probably the most standard practice that most people would go with and it's expected to be, you know, the, the least good results out of all of these. And overall, I'm getting okay results with this. Again, it's nothing to write home about. It's still that very dull look that you're gonna get. None of the clears are really popping. Uh, the the batarang here is very dull. It's not very, you know, not very clear. It's still semi-clear and transparent. It's just not as uh, as vibrant as it could be. I'll compare all of these against the control or the raw prints. These have just been cleaned, but have not been cured or applied any glossy coating to. We then have our prints that were clean, cured, and clear coated. So basically the same results that we were seeing previously, but should be a good bit shinier and clear because of the clear coating that we applied to them. And in fact, I think these do look a little bit better than the just straight on clean and cured prints that we were previously looking at. Again, still some yellow tinting there. The clear coat didn't really help improve that. It's just made it be a lot more glossier and transparent compared to the, uh, to the previous test. Now let's take a look at the prints that were cleaned, then clear coated and cured. This is probably the prints that had the best results out of any of the tests that I've done today. All around, you know, best average looking prints. These are still relatively clear. They're not, uh, they've yellowed a bit because they were primarily cured in the sun while I was clear coating and letting that clear coat dry. The battering I think looks a little bit better than the previous results that we were looking at. I mean, it's kind of similar to that. We could be getting better results from this as well. Here's a quick close up of the water cured prints. And again, I think this is probably the worst results out of all of them just because of how cloudy the prints became during that cleaning process. If you have suggestions on how I can better go about this with cleaning and curing directly in water, let me know down below. Here are the results of the blue tinting of the resin as well. Uh, I did go about doing this the same way as the others where I have uh, cleaned these, then cured, then applied clear coat, or I've gone off and uh, cleaned, clear coated, and cured. So here's one of the examples of a clear bust. This was a larger print that I had printed hollow, and uh, I went off and cleaned this and applied clear coat to it. You can definitely see how it's yellowed more in the sun during the curing process, and maybe I left it out there for just a little bit too long where it didn't stay as clear as it possibly could have. Uh, this might have benefited from some of the blue tinting. Again, I didn't have a chance to run off and reprint this at a much larger scale like this one here to uh, test with. But again, let me know in the comments if you have suggestions on how to retain that clear visual when uh, working with these type of prints. I think the translucent red print here, this living armor from Loot Studios file came out great once we applied the clear coat to it. Again, this was another one of these that I had cleaned off, then cleared and let cure. This is exactly what I'm going for. Obviously with a little bit of pigment in there, it's, it feels like it's a lot easier to work with than just the entirely clear prints. And here's our neon green prints, the Photos Mint Cthulhu print. This is a, a really highly detailed sculpture that there is no way we're gonna be able to do any sort of wet sanding or anything like that. Again, this was just cleaned off and cleared and I think the results are really nice with this. 
And then I was again able to take this Oni mask from Villainous Props that I'd previously printed over a year ago and really brought this back to life with just a little bit of clear coat that was applied to this. And it was previously cleaned and cured and even just applying a few light coats of clear coat to it, I think really helped make it pop. Now, one of the most impressive ones here is this Mandalorian visor, which is pretty dang translucent now that I'm able to see through it here. I could actually almost wear this as a visor for a prop within that helmet. I might end up doing that just to make it a fully resin printed helmet version of this. And again, this was all wet sanded and clear coated and the results I think are pretty fantastic. I can actually see through it on my end as well. Everything's a little bit fuzzy and I'm wondering if I could, if I just with a little bit higher grit sandpaper and maybe some buffing and polishing, could I actually make this even more see through? And I might end up trying that later on. And now for the Kryptonite Batarangs. I think this is probably the one that I had the most fun with because I was just a variety of different sanding and testing with this. So here is the raw, no, it's not raw, but it was cleaned and cured and it's very hazy and fuzzy. We then have one that I'd only used the 60 grit and then applied clear coat to it. If you can get away with that, it's certainly gonna look better than some of the other Batarangs that I had previously printed that were just clear coated. Even with the 220 grit sandpaper, the results look better than the previous prints that we were looking at. Once we went up to 600, this is where things start to really smooth out for this print and it starts to really become a lot more translucent and smooth to touch. It just really feels amazing to handle. And then obviously the 1000 grit is going to be the finest detail. There are still some fine scratches in there. Uh, I feel like with, a, again, with a little bit of polishing and buffing, we might be able to get this even more translucent, but I'm really impressed, really, really impressed with this. If you have a clear print that you can actually sand and wet sand, I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing that, then clear coating. You're gonna get some amazing results with that. So that was a really fun experiment and I wanted to say a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in the Elgu Mars, the Elgu Saturn or any of their resins, I used a lot of their translucent resin here for today's video. You'll find links down below where you can find more details about Elgu's products. They are fantastic machines and if you're interested in getting started with a resin 3D printer, this is one of the best places that you can get started with. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Again, I couldn't do this without your continued support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm really interested in hearing what your feedback is on the translucent prints. And if you have other suggestions on how I can go about testing and comparing that to what I was seeing here in today's video. Again, I think the best results that I saw today was cleaning off my prints in isopropyl alcohol, letting those dry, then clear coating and letting those cure after clear coating. That I think gave me the best results possible. Ideally, if you have a place that you can actually clear coat that you're not in direct sunlight or un under UV light, you might be able to get a more controlled result with the tinting of your clear prints. One thing I also wanted to show you was what happens if you have prints that you've left too long out in the sun here. So I had some prints that I had worked with that I had forgot about. I think I left these out in the sun for about a half an hour after clear coating. And yeah, they're really yellow and uh, tinted brown here. So it's <laughs> not the best results. You definitely wanna pay close attention to whatever you're cleaning and clearing or curing with these clear prints. Hey, thanks again for watching you all. If you haven't already considered subscribing, we would really appreciate that and give me a like because that helps the channel and these videos and the algorithms there ever at YouTube. Hey, thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye now.